Hey friends, welcome back to Axial GT. I recently did a video about the reasons why I'm hyped to play New World. And yes, I'm still very excited to play the game. But that doesn't mean I don't have a few things that do concern me. Amazon's New World will not be perfect. From beta, to launch, or even after. I have yet to find an MMO that is. The real test will be on how Amazon handles feedback and how quickly they can make necessary changes to the game as the need may arise. So here's a short list of a few things that do concern me about Amazon's new world. And if you enjoy content like this, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of future uploads. With that out of the way, let's get started. First up is the direction the game took during its development phase. When the game was first announced, it was touted as an open world PvP sandbox game, and even the developers said it was designed around PvP. Then Amazon Game Studios realized how bad, or toxic, open world PvP can be. It can wind up being stronger characters ganking weaker characters from the onset, stronger characters even camping out just waiting for the weak to mosey on by. And now don't get me wrong, some games that actually works, and can be a good driving force behind the game, if there are rule sets in place. Now when after it was first announced and I learned more about the game, I did assume that the open world PvP might not fit New World very well, especially if the game wanted to succeed in the long term. And at that point, my interest in New World was there, but not at an actual excitement level. Then came the change of course. It wasn't full loot open world PvP anymore. Then my interest peaked. But the change of course, midstream, does create its own set of issues. With the opt-in mechanic, what will be the driving factor to push people to do the PvP part of the game? I can see people trying at one time, getting ganked, and all their gear stolen, only to have to go and craft or find new gear to do it all over again, which some players will be reluctant to do if the risk and reward scenario doesn't pan out. This is an issue Amazon Game Studios will really have to work on. Next we have balancing issues in general, which all MMOs deal with. But there's one instance I can see popping up coming from a mile away. It comes from their dev blog on the arena system. Pulling from a few interesting paragraphs in the dev blog, the way the arena system of the Ancient Guardians works, as you slay particular enemies in New World and dig through the loot they drop, you occasionally come across this brigand key. Along with the key comes specific coordinates on where you need to go to use it. Upon reaching your destination, you'll find an ancient, fine encrusted pillar. From there, you can turn in your key and be teleported straight to the arena. Anyone you have grouped with you at the time will also be teleported if they are standing around the pillar. And that sounds pretty cool, right? Well, it's not until you read down a little farther, you come across the most concerning sentences in my book. It states, success in the arena awards high quality equipment, but in rare cases, they can also award legendary gear with powerful equipment traits. Some of the most powerful gear in the game comes from defeating these arenas. Now this in itself doesn't sound too ominous, but from the sounds of it, it does kind of make crafting armor and weapons an outdated concept. I guess my point is, why craft weapons and armor when you can just farm enemies for keys and go to arenas and try your luck for legendary loot. Now I have thought of a way to remedy this. Now by my understanding there are four levels of items, from armor to weapons, and it goes from common all the way to legendary. But by adding a fifth level to the crafted item list, and that fifth level only be able to be obtained through an experienced crafter, that might mitigate this flaw. But that's only an idea. Amazon Game Studios will have to make some sort of changes to make crafting of weapons and armor more enticing to the player. If the crafting mechanic is to be used by the masses and to help keep the in-game economy going. And lastly, I do have a concern on the manipulation of the systems in place, namely the fighting the corrupted in the invasion system, or at least how players are chosen to participate. The way this reads, if those randomly chosen chosen players are from a competing guild, they can choose not to help you fight the corrupted. And if you lose your invasion battle, it leaves your territory in a weakened state. Then the competing guild can declare war on your territory, and winning control of your weakened territory because you don't have the strength and defensive structures to fight them off. All because the governor wasn't able to choose more players willing to help them fight off the corrupted in the invasion system. I can just see a lot of trolling and manipulation of the invasion system. And maybe it was done on purpose, and designed that way. Maybe not. I can just see a lot of pissed off guilds. Now those are my three main concerns I have for the game. Now some people have some concerns over Isabella's amulet. You get as a pre-order bonus, and some think it's a pay to win mechanic. While I kinda see their point, I do have to respectfully disagree. Pre-order bonuses like this are common with any MMO, and it looks like Amazon Game Studios has chosen their items carefully. If you read the description of Isabella's amulet, it says, equip Isabella's amulet to gain additional constitution to weather attacks and deal additional damage against certain supernatural 
natural enemies. So with the amulet equipped, you'll gain bonus against the undead that will only be in effect when fighting the PvE portions of the game and have no effect on your interactions with player versus player or PvP. And the gains in the grand scheme of things will be negligible. And people have also complained about the lack of marketing for the game. Even though Amazon Game Studios have already stated that the slow marketing is deliberate. They want to bring in people over time and are dedicated for the long haul. Now with all these concerns I have with the game, I'm still really excited and hyped to play New World. But don't get me wrong, I actually expect New World, Beta, and Launch to have issues and to err on the side of Rocky. At least in the beginning. And I'll also mention the Crucible issue. Yes, Crucible is fun to play, but there's nothing really to keep you coming back. But I also don't think it should reflect on New World. There are different dev teams that just so happen to work under the same umbrella of Amazon Game Studios. But that's just my two cents. But my scorecard, personally, will be on how well Amazon Game Studios can tackle these issues as they pop up. Now before I close out this discussion, in my previous New World video, in which I discussed crafting, I also announced an upcoming giveaway of three digital download keys of the New World Deluxe Edition. I'm still going to be doing that, and a drawing will be held around the end of July, but we'll change it a little bit. Now it'll be for three copies of the Steel Book Edition. I'm still working on the specifics of the giveaway, and once they are ironed out, I'll be sure to let you guys know in an upcoming video. So if you like the content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I read all of them, good and bad. With that, I really appreciate you watching. Until next time, I'm out of here. You all have a good one.